Dr. Kim, uh, and thank you Justin and Shauna for talking about optimizing uh, the laser spot on our asteroid sample and talking about the mass, mass loss when we shoot the laser at the sample. So I named this talk, Let's Move Asteroids, because um, uh, I want to introduce you to um, our planetary defense mission. And you already were introduced to the star a little bit by Shauna and Justin. So I'm going to talk about something, about something that is the underlying phenomenon in D-STAR, and that is um, thrust. And that also relates back to what I did. So first, I want to make clear the goals in D-STAR, um, because it, asteroids are coming. It is inevitable. Um, so we proposed a phase array laser um, powered by solar panels, capable of directing energy from the sun. and uh, being and directing that energy onto through lasers onto an asteroid, and this at and at the spot uh, we get a mass ejection which causes a thrust in the opposite direction, uh, and so that's what we can see here: this vaporization cloud coming off uh, the laser spot on the asteroid. But first, I want to take a step back and talk about Newton. Because Newton's third law says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So Jeffrey, can you please stand? Uh, can you jump? <coughs> so this is Newton's law in action. He is applying, he is, uh, has an action downwards, and it gets an opposite and equal reaction upwards. And this is the same concept we use all around us. So in motor boats, the, the, when the propeller spins, it pushes water backwards, and then the boat moves forward. And then in rockets, they, when, we, when we use the fuel in rockets, it's going down, and we get this thrust upwards. This relates back to what we use in D-STAR. And we also use this for relativistic propulsion. Um, so we want to, we also hypothesize um, that we can uh, put this laser spot onto a reflector on the back of the um, spaceship and use um, a photon drive to power this, um, to power the um, spaceship. And what we can see here is some theoretical calculations. Um, for the first 46 days of a laser shooting at a reflector, a D-Star 4, um, which is going to be 10 kilometers, which is really big. Um, that is really in the future. And we can see after 46 days, we start approaching relativistic speeds and we soon get to the relativistic limit and can leave our solar system and start searching for, um, or start exploring the universe. Now, I didn't get the chance, or we, I didn't get a chance to work on relativistic propulsion, but I did use, get to work on something even more awesome, and that is with the torsion balance. So what the torsion balance does is we have a counterweight in our sample on this torsion bar that is hung from a torsion fiber and this effect lets us rotate, uh, uh, gives us a, de a degree of freedom in this direction. And how we measure how much deflection we get when we shoot the asteroid at the material is we shoot a second laser, a commercially available laser, off this mirror. And we shoot, here's the second laser. We shoot it off the mirror, and it comes back into a beam detector. So when we get movement, we detect how much movement we get. So I wanted to show you a video of the laser um, ablating some material on the torsion balance. Maybe I can so we can see this is the laser right here. Well, the laser's over here, but we have a fiber optic cable um, and a lens that puts the uh, laser spot on the asteroid. <coughs> and so the, the problem here it's, it's very clear, we can see our problem. Um, I will come back to this later, is that we have all this light coming out, and I'll explain what that does to our, our system. Um, but first I just want to show you what the, what the um, sample looks like. So when we shoot the laser at the sample, we get this um, hole in the rock. And that's because we're getting mass ejected, and we're hoping that is enough mass ejection to cause a force in the opposite direction, or thrust. And here are 
Oh, and first, I want to show you um, what we use to dampen our system, because in the world around us, as Jeffrey said, there's lots of noise. And we have vibrations as well all around us. And our torsion fiber collects, is very sensitive to all these um, vibrations. So we need to dampen out these noises, uh, these, these vibrations. And so we found that using the dampener is much, help, much more helpful. And so here are our results with um, shooting the laser at the, uh, the basalt or the asteroid type material. We first started it um, without the laser on for a minute and then shot the laser at the material for two minutes and then let it rest for another minute. And we can see that we get an increase in both the X and Y um, axis. So we get rotation this way and we also are getting rotation this way. Um, we weren't expecting rotation um, like this and that is, we're also, it also could be we're getting this data from light leakage um, into our beam detector um, because we can see um, right here is the amount of intensity or the light intensity in our beam detector. It goes up when we shoot the laser and we're working on fixing this problem by um, getting some glass that um, uh, deflect or get uh, filters out the, the red light from our um, laser we're using to ablate the material and we're also going to switch to a green or blue laser and only let that into the beam detector. So to go back a bit, asteroids are coming. Um, they, they have a huge, they can cause a huge problems for us on Earth. And we, Apophis um, is a 325 meter um, in diameter um, asteroid. And it is going to be passing in 2036. And it has a one in a million chance of hitting Earth. That's like um, saying I toss a coin, I flip a coin, and I get 20, I get tails 20 times in a row. So if that ever happens to you, Apophis might hit. <laughs> so be aware. But we have run some simulations to um, see how, how much, um, how long we need to hit, how long we need to shoot a laser at um, Apophis in order to move it to at least two radii um, from Earth, which is what NASA says is the minimum distance we, we should move it. And we can see at five newtons of force, um, we get a missed distance of two radii, and that's going to be for 15 years. Um, and that's with a 20,000 watt laser, and I was using a 40 watt laser. Um, so you can kind of get the sense of the scale. Um, so I would like to thank uh, Lena Kim for this, uh, the second opportunity to come back to RMP. Um, it's been amazing. And I'd also like to thank my professor, Phil Lubin, for working with me late at night and uh, teaching me all about these star and asteroids. And then Mint and my Kayo for helping me out every day, all day. Um, and then Deep Space Lab, uh, Peter, John, Jeffrey, Shauna, and Justin, especially Jeffrey for helping us with the plotting. Um, and then also my mom, dad, and sister, and my friends for being here. Thank you.